have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. I don't really see any difference between Sabbath communities and Seventh-day Adventism, but apparently there is. Rob Skiba pushed this heresy, and so do Founded Earth Brothers and Karen B., who I also promote on my channel. Actually, this and the Torah community's heresy that I will refute tomorrow seem to be the most prevalent heresies within the Flat Earth community and within the Greater Truth Movement. Seems there's no new thing under the sun, and the Judaizers are still a big problem in the Church. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Josh from Founded Earth Brothers stated that he started quote-unquote Sabbath keeping because his wife convinced him to. I wanted to touch base on a topic that is extremely controversial, but it's extremely important to understand, and it has to do with being under grace versus under the law. Because me personally, I had a lot of heated, angry feelings when it came to this topic a long time ago when my wife and I first got married. She was a Sabbath keeper, and I had really never thought much about it other than the fact that I knew we needed to rest one day a week and that, you know, the Sabbath was just a shadow of things to come. Like the Bible says that we were not really under that commandment anymore. That's the way I used to view this topic. And so I understand those of you who see the Sabbath and things like that as just, you know, pointing to the Messiah and that it's done away with now, that we're under grace, we're not under the law. And so people get angry when I try to keep the Sabbath or do something like that, just like they did at my wife, like I did. I just remember thinking, she's going back to old ways and we're not in those old ways anymore. We're in this new era. Christian husbands, not Christian wives, are supposed to be the spiritual leaders over our families. This is God's order. Please watch part 11 of this series for a deeper study into this doctrine. No matter what you call yourself, you're not a Sabbath keeper. You're a Sabbath breaker. There are no Sabbath keepers. There are only Sabbath breakers. Everyone is a Sabbath breaker. So there are no Sabbath communities. It's a delusion. Another worthless denomination, like I talked about in part one. The Holy Spirit, through the Apostle James, tells us that whoever keeps the whole law and fails in one point is guilty of all. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. So if you don't keep the whole law, you're guilty of breaking the whole law, including the Sabbath, whether you go through the rituals of keeping the Sabbath or not. Not to mention, the Sabbath was for the whole community, not just for the individual. When an individual in the nation of Israel broke the Sabbath, the community was commanded to stone him or her to death, or they were guilty of breaking the Sabbath as a community. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron and unto all the congregation. And they put him in ward, because it was not declared what should be done to him. And the Lord said unto Moses, The man shall be surely put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. And all the congregation brought him without the camp and stoned him with stones, and he died as the Lord commanded Moses. 
Are we stoning people to death for breaking the Sabbath today? No. So we're not keeping the Sabbath today. Not as individuals, not as families, not as communities, not as the church, not even as communities of Orthodox Jews. It doesn't matter if you and your little group or even your little family go through the rituals of keeping the Sabbath. It was part of a set of rules for all of God's children for a specific time. Don't get me wrong. The wisdom of the Sabbath is good. The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath, right? And it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day. And his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn. And the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? And he said unto them, Have ye never read what David did when he had need and was an hungered, he and they that were with him? How he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar the high priest, and did eat the showbread, which is not lawful to eat but for the priests? and gave also to them which were with him. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. That's a quote from the Talmud, not the Torah, or the Tanakh, by the way. It's a quote from the Babylonian book the Jews follow more than the Torah or the Tanakh. When Jesus addressed the Sabbath, he addressed it in the context of rebuking the Talmudic Pharisees right out of their own book. Just think about that for a bit. He was mocking them. Worship is different from rest, by the way. Biblical Jews were supposed to rest on Saturday. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Christians come together on Sunday. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. You can actually do both. Rest on Saturday and come together on Sunday. Taking a day off every week is healthy for the body, soul, and spirit. I do my best not to work on Sundays because that's the best day for me right now. But I own an online business that never closes, and I'm the only owner or employee. I do the work of at least a dozen people. If there's an emergency or an urgency, I have no one to cover for me. And even if I could take a whole day off every week, I couldn't keep the Sabbath because I can't keep the Sabbath without keeping the whole Torah, like the Holy Spirit told us through James. Stay tuned for part 13 tomorrow. Please like, share, and subscribe. My everything has been shadow banned, and unless you share, no one will receive this message. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.
And they clapped that time, it wouldn't be no more. But well, it's over oh, and over. Oh, oh, no. 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 Oh, oh, no.